Now, as we move into 2023, I was reminded by Judy Kirby that my first message in January in 2006 was on a Sunday, January the 1st. So this has extra special meaning for me today. I didn't remember that, uh, but I thought that was kind of neat. And I'm going to have to look up a little bit later to see just exactly what I preached and how it's going to be a little bit different, amen? But this morning is different because this is the time of year when many people make resolutions for the new year. They may make a resolution to quit a bad habit. Maybe they're going to resolve to give extra effort to a relationship. Some people resolve to start thinking about improving their health. And in so doing, many are going to decide that they're going to take up running or jogging. Now, I read somebody's Facebook post that said, if you ever see me running, you better look behind me because it's probably a bear chasing me. Amen. But some people are going to take up running and jogging in an effort to improve their health. Others are going to join the gym because they decide they're ready to work out. Amen. Uh, Others may say, well, I'm going to take it a little bit easy. I'm going to start just by walking a little bit. But they do it all in an effort to get healthier at the beginning of this new year. But for the majority of those people making resolutions, it never lasts. I pray that our resolution today is going to last. Not only will it last through this year, but that it will last forever. Now, physical exercise is very important. It's good not only to get physical exercise for your body. It's good because of the mental benefit. And many of us need a mental benefit. Somebody say amen. All right. We all need this mental benefit and the help that working out gives. But this year, I do want to encourage all of us to get some more regular physical exercise. Because it is so good for us, especially as we get older. Now, while exercise is real good, there is something better that lasts forever. 1 Timothy chapter 4, the New Living Translation says in verse 8, Physical exercise has some value, but spiritual exercise is more important because it provides a reward not only for this life, but for the next. Spiritual exercise. As Christians entering into a brand new year, it's only reasonable that we begin thinking about our need for spiritual exercise. We need to be thinking more about deepening our relationship with God. We need to be thinking more about uh, strengthening our walk with God. We need to be thinking more about devoting more of our life to Christ Perhaps uh, doing away with some kind of sinful behavior. We need to be doing more about, as we consider, perhaps submitting to believers' baptism. There are a lot of people who come to church on a regular basis. They may have even given their lives to Christ, but they have not submitted to believers' baptism. Maybe 2023 is the year where you're going to do that. But also, maybe this year is time for you to start reading the Word of God. And I've made a commitment to God this year that once again, I'm going to read through the entire Word of God. And I'm going to not just read it, but I'm going to study it. And I pray that you'll do the same thing because it just yields abundant fruit in our life when we make those kinds of changes, when we have that kind of spiritual exercise. So I challenge you to do that this year. And and at least do the net in the New Testament, okay? But make sure that you get that kind of spiritual exercise. Why? The reason why is because there is absolutely nothing that you can do in 2023 that's going to benefit you more than being determined to walk with God in a more faithful way than you did last year. 
Amen? There's nothing more than you can do to benefit you more than to walk with God more faithfully than you did last year. I pray that you will make a resolution, all right, that you will resolve to have a closer walk with thee in 2023. See, everyone on the planet lives or walks this road of life. But it's how we walk that makes a difference. Everybody lives. But it's how we live that makes the difference. So friend, how are you living? And more importantly, for whom are you living? In the book of Colossians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul is, has sent an encouragement to the Christians there at that church of Colossae. And of course we know that the Holy Spirit of God has inspired the Apostle Paul to pen these words to these Christians. And I want you to hear in verse 10 what the Holy Spirit of God has encouraged Paul to write to these believers. He says, Walk worthy of the Lord. Walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. I would say that every single one of us here today need to be walking worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in all that we do, and increasing in the knowledge of God. And friend, it's the premise of verse 10 that I want to talk to you about today. Walking with God. You see, as a believer, there are really only two ways to walk in this life. You can walk with God or you can walk in the world. You have that choice. Walking with God, however, always leads to abundant life. Walking with God always leads to abundant blessings. And if you choose not to walk with God and you choose instead to walk with the world, that's what you're doing. If you don't choose to walk with God, you are choosing to walk in the world. It's your choice. So choose wisely because it's one choice or the other. Now today, we're going to learn about three men and how they walked with God. Three men and what their walk with God looked like. And I pray that you're going to get some fruit from this, some things that you can use in your life in 2023 to make your life and your walk with God more faithful. Let's begin with a fellow named Enoch. A fellow named Enoch walked in influence. Now, back at the beginning of the book of Genesis, in chapter 5, in verse 21, the Bible says, Enoch. Enoch lived 65 years and then begot Methuselah. He had a son named Methuselah. And after he had this son named Methuselah, the Bible says that Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked. He walked with God and suddenly he was not for God took him. So right smack in the middle of his walk with God, God just took him up. He didn't even die. Now, the Bible says that Enoch walked with God. Well, I think that the, the logical question is, okay, what did that look like? How did Enoch walk with God? I mean, what did Enoch actually do? That made him walk with God. I mean, did he literally walk with God step for step? I mean, anything is possible with God, right? We know that it wouldn't be the only time that God stepped out of heaven and took human form and walked on this earth. After all, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came down from heaven, right? And walked on this earth in human form. But normally when we think about Enoch's walk with God, what we think about is how close Enoch stayed with God. We think about the kind of faithful relationship that Enoch enjoyed with God. I mean, friend, how much time do you spend 
walking and talking with God throughout your day? If the answer is not all, then it's lacking. Amen. So I'm praying that you're going to make all of your day about walking and talking with God. You need to be able to answer this question. Am I staying in touch with God? Am I staying in touch with God all my days? I mean, we talk to people a ton. But how much do we talk to God? How much do we communicate with God? And the reason I ask is this. If you're going to walk with God, if you're going to walk worthy of the Lord, then you got to spend some time with him. If you're going to walk with God, you have got to have an ongoing communication with God. And friend, I pray that in 2023, you're going to stay in touch with God throughout your days. Now, I said that Enoch's walk was a walk of influence. How and who did Enoch's walk influence? Well, verse 22 tells us that for the last 300 years of his life, Enoch enjoyed this intimate walk with God, right? And friends, I think that that in itself is probably the best way that Enoch influenced others. You see, when people see you walking in a lasting relationship with God, when people see you Walking in a joyful relationship with God. Other people are going to want what you got. But if it's here today, gone tomorrow. If it's happy today and glum tomorrow. They ain't going to want no part of that. They say, I can get that in the world. So let our walk with God be lasting and joyful. So the Bible says that Enoch was the father of of Methuselah. Does anybody know what Methuselah was known for? Long life. In fact, Methuselah was the oldest person in the Bible. 969 years Methuselah lived. But it's not only that that he was known for. Because Methuselah was also the grandfather of Noah. Everybody know who Noah was, right? Methuselah was the grandfather of Noah. So Enoch was the great grandfather of Noah. And the Bible tells us that Noah also walked with God. Could it be, friend, that Enoch found it instrumental that he pass on his faith to the next generation? Could it be, friend, that Enoch was instrumental in influencing his whole family or at least a portion of his family to walk with God? I think it's very, very likely. Why is that? Because I know that how parents live, how grandparents live, how great-grandparents live affects how their children live. So when you see Enoch having a walk of influence, it wasn't just to his kid or his grandson or even his great-grandson. If you check out Facebook, you're going to see a re-emerging pattern. For example, some men love to hunt. How many hunters we got in here? Hands up. Boom. Boom. Okay, some men love to hunt. And you know what happens? A lot of times their sons love to hunt too. Ryan, Carson, right? He loves to hunt too. Why? Because his daddy does, right? Some ladies, some women love animals. And as a result, so do their daughters. Some ladies love to cook and to entertain guests into their home. And as a result, Many daughters do too. Some men are lazy couch potatoes. And guess what happens to their sons? Turn out the same. Could the same thing be true of a parent's walk with God that has that kind of influence? There's no doubt in my mind 
Friend, many of you are in church today because your parents were in church. Many of you have a walk with God today because your parents did. And likewise, your children, your grandchildren may enjoy a walk with God as well. But I suspect that Enoch's walk with God probably didn't stop with his family. I suspect that Enoch's walk with God probably also influenced other people while he was at work. I'd wager that Enoch's walk of influence influenced people for God in his circle of friends. I'd wager that Enoch's walk uh, of influence with God probably influenced his neighbors. You see, friends, if your walk with God is what it ought to be, if your walk with God is what it ought to be, you will influence not only your family, but perfect strangers as well. That's what a walk with God does. A walk with God influences other people. So that's Enoch's walk of influence, but I already mentioned Noah's walk. Noah's walk was a bit different although it was a big influence as well. But Noah's walk was a walk of obedience. Just the next chapter in Genesis chapter 6, the Bible says in verse 5 that the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. And so the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and the birds of the air, for I'm sorry that I have made them. But, but Noah found grace in the eyes of God. My first question was, why? Why did Noah find grace but no one else? Well, verse 9 answered that question for me. Because it says, this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. That is, he was blameless, full of integrity. But this is the big one. Why did God pour out his grace on Noah? Because Noah walked with God. Noah also walked with God. So, the great grandson of Enoch, Noah, also walked with with God. And in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7 the Bible says that by faith Noah when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear in holy fear built an ark. In holy fear and holy reverence to God Noah built that ark. God told Noah that he was going to send a flood and that Noah better get ready for it. And in holy fear, knowing that what God said would be true, Noah obeyed God. And he prepared that ark for the promised flood. Friend, if God told you that the world was going to be destroyed in your lifetime, how would you react? If God told you that you were going to die at some point in the immediate future, how would you respond? The details aren't nearly as important as the overriding truth. And the overriding truth is this. We'd like to think that in holy fear, in that believing God, we would do some things differently. Amen? And guess what? We all are going to die at some point in the immediate future. The question is, will you do anything differently? I'd like to hope that people would take inventory of their lives. And they would realize that they need to be doing a better job of obeying God. 
We can all do a better job. But why do we wait? Why do we wait as if we have all the time in the world to start doing the will of God? When we know what we should be doing. Every single day, people are leaving this world and some of them without much notice. Some people live long lives. Others die far too prematurely. I read where preachers are taught to preach as a dying man to dying men and women. Why? Because we're all facing that same fate. I read about one preacher who said that he wanted to be known for dying while he was preaching. And sure enough, at the appointed time, he dropped dead right behind the pulpit. Who's to say that couldn't happen to me right now? Right here. Today. Here's my point. In holy fear, we need to be doing some things differently. In holy fear, we need to do a better job of obeying God throughout our lives. In holy fear, Noah built an ark to save his family. What would you not do to save your family? In holy fear, we all need to walk with God and do whatever it takes to save ourselves and our family. In holy fear, we all need to be faithful in our worship of the Lord. I mean, an hour or two on Sunday is not that much to ask. It's not that much of a sacrifice. But God asks it nonetheless. In holy fear, we need to be giving back. Giving back our time. Giving back our money. Giving back our effort to grow the kingdom of God. See, God doesn't ask us to give much when it's compared to what we've been given. But we are called to give back in time, effort, and resources. In holy fear, we all need to be spending more time in prayer. Somebody testify to that. You're looking at one man that desperately needs to pray more. We need to spend more time communicating with God. I can't expect my walk with God to deepen until I'm communicating with Him more. In holy fear, we all need to listen to God more. We need to listen to God like Noah listened to God. And listen, y'all, the only way that I know of in our day and time to listen to God is by hearing from the Word of God. How much time are you spending listening to God? In holy fear, we need to set aside some time to listen to God. We need to set aside some time to be studying and reading God's word every single day. In holy fear, we need to obey God. Just like Noah obeyed. So Noah, or Enoch had a walk of influence and Noah had a walk of obedience. But those two are really pointless if you don't walk like Abraham walked. For Abraham had a walk of faith. Listen to what the scriptures say in Genesis 17. When Abram was 99 years old, I read this to Henry this morning. When Abram was 99 years old, I said, that's one short of 100, isn't it? He asked me how old I was. I said, I'm 100. He didn't buy it. Anyway, when, nine, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. He's telling Abram this at 99 he goes on to say in verse 2, And I will make my covenant between me and you, and listen, will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abram fell on his face in worship, and he talked with God, saying, As for me, 
Behold, my covenant is with you, Lord. And you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant. To be God to you and your descendants after you. Abraham had a walk of faith. At age 99, God said to Abraham, walk before me and be blameless and I will multiply you exceedingly. Talk about influence, right? That's crazy. But what did God actually mean when he spoke that sentence? I think that God was saying, Abram, if you'll walk in this life, if you'll walk with me in this life constantly, consistently, and faithfully, you'll be blameless. You won't be sinless, but you'll be blameless and you'll have integrity and you'll have character and you'll have faith. And I'm going to make a ton more people just like you. Friend, the only way that we can live a blameless life like Abraham did is for us to walk in a faithful relationship with God. We get all of our goodness, we get all of our holiness from God. The only way that we're going to multiply ourselves is if others see us walking in a faithful relationship with God. You know, I read a Fox interview with Billy Graham back in 2010. And Billy Graham said on national TV, he said, I have a tremendous amount of hope because I'm a believer in Jesus Christ and he was raised from the dead. I know that Jesus is alive right now. And he said, because of what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross, I look forward to seeing my wife in heaven in the very near future. Because I'm 92 years old. And I know my time on earth is limited. But then the reporter asked Billy this question. He said, Billy, if you could do it all over again, would you do it any differently? Billy thought for just a split second and he said, yes. Yes. If I had it all to do over again, I would spend more time in prayer telling my God how much I love him. I'd spend more time in prayer telling God how much I look forward to the time that he and I are going to spend together in all eternity. Now, friend, as far as I know, Billy Graham always walked with God in a very blameless way. He was full of integrity, full of character. How could this hero of the faith live that kind of blameless life? Well, he'd be the first to tell you that it only happens when you walk with God by faith. When you really trust God. He wouldn't say, well, folks, I did it my way. No. He'd say, God did it as I walked with faith with him. You know, I kind of think of Billy Graham as an Abraham in our day, especially when it comes to living by faith. Billy Graham faithfully preached Jesus Christ live before 215 million people in over 185 different countries. That's an Abraham. But Abraham's faith was, was clear too. When God first promised him at age 75 that if he'd leave home, if he would go to another country, if he would make a nation, God said, I'll make you a blessing. 
in 2023, God wants to make you a blessing. But you're going to have to walk with influence. You're going to have to walk in obedience. And you're going to have to walk by faith. Abraham trusted God. And he walked to that foreign country. And sure enough, he was a blessing. In Romans chapter 4, verse 19, the Bible says that Abraham did not waver the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that what God had promised, he would also perform. We need to trust God like that. We need to have that kind of faith. Through, the, through Abraham's consistent and faithful walk with God, he was blameless and God made a ton more people just like him. Including me and you. You see, it was through Abraham's walk of faith that you and I are here. Trying and seeking to walk with God as he did. So friends, Christmas is over. Some may say, thank the Lord. <laughs> Christmas is over, and whether you got what you wanted or whether you didn't, what you need more than anything in 2023 is to walk with God more. What you need more than anything in 2023 is to walk with God better. And to do that, you're going to have to follow Solomon's advice found in Proverbs chapter 3. Solomon said, listen up, y'all. You're going to have to trust in the Lord with all your heart. You're going to have to lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, day in and day out, in all your ways, you're going to have to acknowledge God. And if you'll do it, he will direct your path. So in 2023, how can you, how can I, Develop an intimate walk with God. Well, we can do just like these men did. We can live a life of influence like Enoch. He lived in a way that told others about God. We can live a life of obedience like Noah. We can live in a way that shows the value of obeying God. And we can live a life of faithfulness like Abraham. Just living in a way. It shows that we trust God in everything that we do. But you're not going to be able to do anything those guys did unless you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 that if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved from sin. Friend, in order to walk with God, you got to be saved from sin. And Jesus is the only way for that to occur. So my prayer for you this morning as we begin 2023 is if you haven't given your life to Christ, you'll do it today. Otherwise, you don't have a hope for 2023. Let me pray for you. Father God, we praise you and we thank you so much for seeing our greatest need and providing the solution. Lord, we ask you, In the name above all names, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, we ask that if there is anyone here today or anyone listening in that has not given their lives to Christ so that they can walk free from sin and walk with you the way you want us to, Father, that today will be the beginning of a brand new day for them. They have recognized, Lord, that if they're going to walk with you, then some things got to change. They got to do things differently. Lord, let us all take that message to heart. And Lord, let us all realize that we can't continue doing it like we did it last year and expect it to be any different. No, we're going to have to step it up. We're going to have to step up our level of influence. We're going to have to step up our level of obedience to you. Lord, we're going to have to step up our faith. So Father, whether it be someone coming to Christ for the first time, or a long-time believer looking to make 2023 different than last year. You have your will and your way in their heart. Father, you draw them close to you. And Father, if the need is prayer, we'll pray. If the need is a, a decision, we'll, we'll decide. If the need is a recommitment, Lord, we'll recommit. 
You just give them the courage to do something differently. And let it all be for your glory in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's all stand. Let's sing.